See, please. Ladies and gentlemen, today is October 27th. It is an A day. Today's question is, how is fission different from budding? Somebody raise your hand and tell me what yesterday's question was, please. Go ahead, Mr. Felix. How does the tree have 40 different fruit? How is that possible? How was that possible? Excellent. The terminology was grafting. So on your pink paper, you are writing, that tree had 40 different fruit from the process called grafting. You cut different branches off and they will be adhered to one tree. Today, we're answering the question, how is fission different from budding? We are reading an article about animals. You're going to choose two animals that you would like to read about. You are going to research different forms of asexual reproduction using the textbook, 129 to 135. And if time allows us to, we'll watch short little movie clips on how these organisms actually do this form of asexual reproduction in their natural habitat. And the last thing is a challenge. You took a piece of paper from that table. There are six organisms on the front and six on the back. They reproduce in different ways. So your challenge is to try to figure out, was it asexual or sexual based on the information they gave you? So anybody that gets it all right will win some BR3 bucks. You can work alone or you can work with a partner. So right now, I'm giving you guys about five minutes to read the article. I want you to look at words and highlight, but this is what we're doing. We're looking for these specific questions. <laughs> okay, this was the last period, so I'm just going to erase it, and you guys didn't see it. Okay, so how did they reproduce? That's one question you have to answer. So on a separate sheet of paper, in your notebooks, you're answering how did they reproduce? And then the second thing was, was it beneficial? Is this a good way? for the organisms to reproduce. And then you have to explain why or why not. So you need to find me details from the text. One little detail from your reading. Okay, so are we reading about every single organism on these papers? No, how many are we picking? Two, you may begin. So we're looking at the article and there are how many different organisms? We need to look at four of them. The first one is the stick bug. Can somebody tell me how this organism reproduces? How does the stick insect reproduce? Did anybody read about the stick insect? Rael? Yes, so they can reproduce sexually and asexually. Good job. You can give me more details. Yes, they prefer this way. Why? Yeah, the males are very aggressive. And if the males are aggressive, what could happen? It tells me, give me, I need you to look at the document. I need you to look at the article. And I need you to give me information that supports your claim. So there should be like a sentence or a paragraph or a little excerpt from a sentence. Focus. From this paragraph, perhaps, that might be evidence. So when you say something, you want to support your claim, right? So give me details from the article that supports it. Yes, what does that mean? It's costly. If something is costly, it's expensive. But what are we paying for? What are we, what are we using to um, pay? The, the animals don't have money. So what's costly? What are they jeopardizing? Yes, exactly. Good job, John. Their lives. It's costly for them, their lives. Because they're so aggressive, they, they fight. So they don't want to do it like this because they know they could die. Do they win all the time? No, they don't. Because why do you think they don't win? Why do the males win sometimes? Does it tell you in this article? Why do the males win sometimes? What would happen if the males didn't win and the, the females got their way? Yeah, but what would happen to the actual population? They would decrease in males. Good. Can Trell tell me something else? That, yeah, the males would almost be wiped out. And if the males were wiped out, what would happen to the genes? What would happen to the genes if the males were wiped out? 
Yes, we wouldn't have any different genes anymore. So all the organisms would be the same. So if a disease came and this tick bug wasn't strong enough to fight off the disease because they didn't have the right genes, would they be able to reproduce and survive? No. So in this case, is this productive for them? Is this beneficial? Not necessarily. So it's not necessarily, necessarily beneficial. But why do they do it? It might be another organism that gives us a clue. We're read right about the second one. Second organism is the snake. Tell me about the snake. How are their babies? Do they all healthy? No. Yeah, so this is not beneficial to them either. The snake wasn't beneficial. So why do they reproduce like this? What's the matter? Why do they reproduce like that? Give me something in the article. Give me some text. Snake reproduces like this only because it is... Why do they do it like this, Isabella? Did you read about the snake? Okay, so who read about the snake? Nobody picked the snake? Oh, Selena, tell me about the snake. She had to. Why? What happened? She was, tells you in the first sentence, the first paragraph. First sentence. Where's the evidence that, yes, yeah, there are no males. So what happens if there are no males? Can she reproduce? No, but asexually she can. Do you think this is something that the organism was born to be able to do? What do you think, Ryle? Like the oh, actual original snake, possibly not. And then what happened was, yeah, adaptations occurred, mutations occurred, things changed because they were afraid of what, Matthew? Extinction, you got it. They were afraid of extinction, so they had to. Does anybody, um, by reading this article, there was a term that they used over and over again. You should have seen the term in um, all four of the organisms. You know the term that I'm that describes this type of reproduction? What's the term, Kentrell? Exactly, parthenogenesis. I want you to put that in the back of your head because we're gonna talk about what that actually means. All right, let's look at the next guy. The next organism is a sawfish. Did anybody read about the sawfish? What do we know about the sawfish? What'd you do, read them all? Oh, ask the question, love it. Um, no, but you know what? Uh, Jimmy can. But Jimmy hasn't. So I'm curious as to why. Jimmy's a girl. She should be able to reproduce asexually if the other ball pythons did. And she's been in captivity for her whole life. So I'm curious as to, but she's not been with other organisms. So maybe these other organisms once were able to reproduce and now, like she's never reproduced ever. She's been a baby that we've had her. So she's, she doesn't know. So if she was maybe, if she did reproduce and then all of a sudden we took away the males. Maybe she'd be like, hey, I got to keep doing this. I need to make sure my species stays alive. But she hasn't. I was, I was hoping that she did one day. But that's why I'm thinking that she hasn't. All right, let's look at the other one. The next one is the sawfish. Somebody give me details about that. Go ahead, John. Yeah, same thing. No males. They're going to reproduce sec asexually. It's, is it beneficial for them? It says the young sawfish were actually what? Keep going. Yeah, it, it's beneficial in this case. But do they prefer it? Do they want to do it this way? What do they say? Why do they do it this way? Yeah, the last ditch effort. Good job. I like that you guys are using the text to help you get the answers. It's a last, last ditch effort. They're now analyzing to see how often they do this. Okay, last one. Last organism is the lizard. Who read about the lizard? Tell me about the lizard. You read them all, huh? <laughs> Tell me about the lizard. Yeah. So scientists initially thought that they, that's all they reproduce, right? Asexually, they were all females. But is it true? Are they only females? No, because if they were only females, they would all be identical. There are some males. And do they prefer to do it this way? They said they've been doing it this way for how many millions of years? Four millions of years, but why did this change? 
It changed. They have males. Yeah, they are hybrids, and they believe that they, they want to have some kind of genetic exchange. Initially, they didn't think they had any genetic exchange. There were no genes that were going to be crossed. But we need to have genes to cross so that we can have success. So for the lizard, parthenogenesis may be a successful strategy. But for the other ones, it's a what? It's a last resort. So is it beneficial? Yes and no. But it might be necessary for survival of the species. It's necessary for survival of the species because if there's no males around, they don't have a choice. If they do not reproduce, the species becomes extinct. It might not be beneficial because asexual is not going to cross the genes. No crossing of genes. So we're not getting genetic variation. No crossing of genes. All right. You're going to be looking at page two in your yellow notes. Everybody get there. Page two, yellow notes. Raise your hand and tell me how many different strategies we're looking at. Page two yellow note says how many strategies? Five. So you're using your textbook, page 129. And on 129 to 135, you're researching the different types of asexual reproduction. And you're drawing a picture and defining it. Don't just find the definition. Read a little bit more because you need to understand it. Because you're coming back here to teach me all the different forms of asexual reproduction that organisms can undergo. So right before, even before we get there, what do you know about asexual reproduction? How many parents are there? One. So these organisms are reproducing all by themselves. We just looked at parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis in animals. Now we're looking at five different things. Binary vision, budding, regeneration, sporulation, and vegetative propagation. I'm sorry, before you go there, I wanted to look at something else because I think this is important. Here's the term, parthenogenesis. It has two different root words. The origin of these words comes from Greek. It comes from Greece. It comes from um, a long time ago. They had these words and they had like Greek mythology. They had stories that they used to tell. So Genesis, they would tell stories about the creation of the, the world. Um, the earth, and they would tell stories about the Parthenos. And those happened to be individuals that were virgins. So if you see the term parthenogenesis, it actually tells you what it means. This root means virgin, and that means creation. So put those two words together, and parthenogenesis is, yes, virgin creation. That means birth without a male. There's no mate. So when you guys... Um, are introduced to new words and you don't know what they mean, try to figure it out by looking at words that you know. So this is something that, this is a skill that you want to develop because when you take the SATs, there's lots of vocabulary words and this is what they test you on. So right now, you're not too young to start doing SAT practice. Every day you should take a word and, and break it apart. So I try to do that as much as possible, correct? Like with the prefixes and such. All right, so you go into your groups. Okay, I want to do sporulation together. Somebody read to me what this excerpt says to the right. What do we got, Michael? Okay, so they don't necessarily always develop into new organisms. They have to have favorable conditions. Good job. And where do they come from? They're small reproductive cells that come from a parent. So what does that mean? How many parents? One parent. So what are we writing in our notes for sporulation? What are we writing? They're specialized cells that grow into new organisms. And that organism is going to be identical. There's no genetic variation. There's no crossing. So mold is a good example. A piece of bread. It starts to decompose, but you get fungus that will grow on it. And that fungus is like a dust that's airborne. And those particles, those specialized cells, they become dormant. 
until the conditions are right. Mushrooms are another good example. You have mushrooms in your yard, but you don't see them until it rains a lot. Why? Do they just sporadically appear? Is it like spontaneous generation? Yeah, mushrooms are decomposers, and they need those moist conditions. So they're dormant. The spores are there. They're just lying around. So on your front lawn, you have lots of mushroom spores because they're airborne. They can come from your neighbor's yard. They can come from down the block. The wind comes. They can bring them there. They're on your um, front lawn, but they do not sprout until they don't grow until the conditions are right. So vegetative propagation is what you did yesterday. You're going to look at the textbook for that. And the other page is the other ones. So you can go with your partners now. Binary fission. Somebody give me a definition of binary fission. What's happening? Control. Exactly. Good job. Keep going. Cell division. What else? It happens in prokaryotic cells. We said that already, that they are um, very primitive cells, like bacteria, because they don't have an organized nucleus. The cell will divide and to split into two identical cells. Good job, Control. So you have an original cell, sometimes paramecium, could be amoeba. They're very primitive cells from the Monera kingdom. They have their DNA just random. So this guy is going to start to reproduce its DNA, and then it's going to start to pinch in the middle. So it's still connected. And then it will break apart. So the original cell is gone. But now we have two identical, what we call, offspring, and they call them daughter cells. This happens in paramecium. It happens in bacteria. It happens in amoeba. They can reproduce by binary fission where they split into two identical cells. So fission is division. Budding is the second one. You should have this all done. This is just review from your group. Somebody tell me what budding is. What happens in budding? Let's make this a little bit smaller. Budding. What's going on in budding? Go ahead. Exactly. It's growing right off of the parent. The new organism grows off of the parent. So when it grows off of the parent, it's growing and growing and growing, and then all of a sudden it just pops off. So here's the organism. I'll make a simple organism. I'm making a circle because it's yeast. The yeast grows a little bud, and sometimes it grows a lot of buds. So there could be a whole bunch of buds growing off the yeast, and then it grows a little bit bigger, and then it grows a little bit bigger until finally it just pops off. The original is still there. Here it is. That's the mommy. That's the parent, and the baby just grows off the original. So it grows, and it grows, and it grows until it pops off. So in the demonstration with the clay, this one's easy. organism the little piece is growing and growing and growing it's like a wart and then it grows off pops right off the original is still here but the baby is the offspring is um there as well this is fast too just grows off it's a little bit smaller identical but smaller vision is division and budding oh it's just a little bud it's my friend budding is my friend Vision is division and budding is my friend. No, you don't like that one? It's catchy when I say it a thousand times. Vision is division and budding is my friend. A little bud comes off. Hi, look at the baby. The little baby comes off. It's little. The baby. All right, next one is regeneration. You know this prefix means to do what? Do it uh, again. What are we doing again? We're regenerating something. If I was nice to you, well, if you needed it, I'd give it to you. I'd give you a piece of my liver. Not the whole thing, just a little piece. Because my liver has the ability to regenerate. So does yours. What does that mean? It has the ability to regenerate. Exactly. It grows back. So the example in the book they gave you. So let's get the definition. It is a new organism grows from a piece of the other organism. Like a lizard can grow a new tail if I try to catch it. When I was a kid, um, we would go to Florida and I'd try to catch the lizards and that was not very nice of me. 
because the lizard doesn't want to be caught, so it would break its own tail off. And then it would grow it back later. Wouldn't be as strong, but they'd grow it back. Starfish. You um, see those starfish. They have the ability to regenerate. They can grow back their pieces. And planaria as well has the ability to grow back. Planaria like flatworms. You cut the planaria in half, and you get two new planaria. So the book shows you the planaria. They give you the flatworm. Well, draw a starfish. This starfish is missing two arms. I'll put the two arms over here. What's going to happen? This piece is going to grow back the two arms. So let's get this two, two arms back. And these two arms are going to grow how many arms? Three. And it will continue to grow. So there is like this old wives' tale, this whole story about this fisherman who felt like he couldn't fish because the starfish were eating all his fish. So he got mad. He got the starfish out of there. He was fishing them up all the time. And he kept ripping off their legs and throwing them back in. He said, ha-ha, you're not going to eat my fish anymore. The next day, he went fishing for like a month, and it was worse. There were no fish. Why? What did he do to the starfish? What did he do, Kanye? Yeah, he allowed them to reproduce asexually, and he created more. So he wasn't the smartest fisherman in the ocean, in the sea. All right, last one. There's one more, right? And that one was something that we did yesterday. So this one should be really quick for you guys to do. Vegetative propagation. Somebody give me the definition. You probably didn't even have to look this up. You could have used your notes from yesterday. So how does that happen, Michael? And what type of organism can do this? Only what, Natasha? Natalia, sorry, babe. Only what kind of organisms can undergo vegetative propagation? Only plants. No other organism can do this but plants. That's why it's called vegetative propagation. Plants reproduce like this. So I could take a stem of a celery. Here it is. I cut it. We did this. We took the stem of the celery, and then all of a sudden now the celery has leaves. And it also has roots. So when you take a piece of a plant and it regenerates and grows back, it grows back a whole new plant. You could take the root of a carrot. So we take just the root of the carrot, just that part, and I cut it. And we get a whole new... Yeah, we get a whole new plant. Good job. 